Law Warrior Online BGS-1T Barguest Overview This new and unusual design was the brainchild of Katrina Steiner, Archon of the Lyran Alliance. The Archon informed Farhees Industries of Tharkad that she wished to create a new design with a terrifying visage like that of the Atlas or Banshee. She also wanted to make a four-legged design. Thahi's executives attempted to dissuade her from the quad design, which has been much maligned for centuries, but failed in their attempts. Only during the final testing of the new mech, when new four-legged designs appeared in the Draconis Combine and Free Wills League militaries, did Thahi's industries appreciate the political and military implications of a new quad design in the Lyran Alliance Armed Forces. Upon viewing the finished mech's animalistic grace and power, the Archon named it Barguest, after the savage wolf-like creatures of mythology. Capabilities Early in the design process, several designers noticed the similarities between preliminary designs for the Barguest and the highly successful Bushwhacker, with its exceptionally long, low chassis. The engineers moved the Bushwhacker's legs forward, enabling them to install the rear legs and to overcome many of the complicated interior layout problems that so plagued the early Bushwhacker. Many months were spent on simulators and live fire ranges to find the weapons configuration that would best suit this new design. The designers initially rejected the weapon that proved the most effective complement to a four-legged design, the large bore autocannon. Unwilling to mount such an antiquated weapon on their new mech, they spent considerable time looking for another solution. The entire project was on the verge of shutdown when Defiance Industries of Hesperus II made the breakthrough into large bore LBX and ultra autocannons. An LBX Type 20 autocannon was shipped to Tharkad, where designers mounted it on the Barguest, along with twin extended range large lasers. This weapon configuration was extremely successful, and the new mech soon began full production. Deployment The first Barguests went to five newly christened units of the Alliance Jaegers, the Bolan, Sky, Donegal, Coventry, and Alarian Jaegers. Each unit began as a battalion, charged by the Archon to form an elite regiment from one of the five new Lyran Alliance provinces, with each unit drawing recruits from only that province. The Archon hopes to inspire feelings of national pride. Variants The only variant currently available switches the LB for an Ultra 20 and exchanges the twin extended range large lasers for a single extended range PPC. The additional tonnage freed up by the weapons change made room for one more double heatsink to increase heat dissipation along with a mere ton of armor. So the Barguest is a 70-tonner, its chassis is the Earthwork GRF Quad, its power plant is a 350 Magna XL with a cruise of 54 kph and a maximum speed of 86 kph, with no jump jets. Its armour is Duralex Heavy. Its armament is two Blaze Fire Sweet Shot extended range large lasers and a single Defiance Disintegrator LB-20 autocannon. It's manufactured by Farty's Industries on Tharkad. The communication system is the Tharhees uh, U-Turp HM14, and its targeting and tracking is the Tharhees Ares 8A. Overall, this translates into a mech that is a 5 and 8 uh, walk and run, with 20 heat dissipation from 10 double heat sinks. It has 9 armor on the head, 30 on the CT, 9 on the rear, with 21 on the right and left torso, uh, with 6 on the rear and then 27 on the right and left front legs, and 27 on the right and left rear legs, so not too much difference there. It has the ER large lasers mounted in the left torso, and the LB-20 in the right torso slash center torso via critical splitting. Its ammo is 10, uh, well, 2 tons of ammo that are split between both of the rear legs, uh, 10 shots each, giving it a total of 20. Uh, actually, not a bad mech. Uh, visually, not awful don't dislike it. Uh, I imagine the pilot being so low down it that there has to be some kind of gun camber or something to give so when the pilot is aiming they have actual line of sight with the with the guns otherwise it's, it's going to be a bit weird. It also looks like it's a machine that's got some kind of uh, capability of possibly being able to fire behind it because of the at least on the art you'd assume that the large lasers might be able to rotate 180 degrees and be able to fire behind. Not so sure about the autocannon, that's probably unlikely. But yeah, it's, it looks like it's got the capability of being able to, uh, you know, look in several different directions and keep fire. 
Also, not bad uh, speed for a 70 tonner, being able to run 8 directly toward a target before unleashing the LB20 is pretty powerful. And its ER larges obviously allow it to uh, engage targets at range without having to worry too much about uh, running out of ammo and still being able to do half decent damage. Obviously, we're losing a fair amount of uh, weapons for a 70 tonner here because of the larger engine. And the XL is always a bit of a drawback here and there, but still not the worst, not the worst. Uh, I imagine this thing probably costs a bit more because of the development of these things. Obviously, quad mechs are uh, far more complex than standard battle mechs, and uh, obviously, you have more humanoid designs, so it probably just costs a little bit more. It's one of the biggest drawbacks, I think, of the technical readouts is they don't just have an actual in universe C bill cost. Um, they do end up in other books further down the line where you can get actual costings for a lot of these things, but yeah, the actual technical readouts, wherever they're added, they just, they just don't appear. I think it's a, uh, it's a big shame, because it would be useful, uh, especially if you were uh, running a, a Mac or a tabletop campaign, you'd be able to sort of have an idea of the sort of costings and be able to come up with um, rough values for, say, there's a damaged one on the market, or there's a salvage, or that kind of thing, and you can work out how much the players might be able to sell a downed unit that they've captured, or... Um, buying a new one or getting replacement parts, that kind of thing, gives you kind of rough idea of how much it would cost. But uh, yeah, they never do that, unfortunately, which is a shame. Uh, I don't, as I said, I don't dislike it. Uh, I could certainly see it being quite useful, uh, especially for uh, its pretty direct role on the field, which is to use its uh, its higher speed for 70 tons to be able to move with uh, faster moving lances, uh, especially like 60 tonners and 55 tonners, and it can be there to provide some of the more uh, serious firepower. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's all right. It's not bad. I haven't got much else to say about this one, unfortunately. Uh, like the background is, yeah, it's fairly straightforward. It's this idea of being able to obviously give the Lyman Alliance some unique equipment, uh, rather than uh, having um, uh, just using you know all the standard mechs that the um, Federated Sons and the Lyman Commonwealth are currently using. So yeah, it, it makes sense from that, from a uh, yeah, universe perspective. So, um, yeah, not bad. Not the worst, the Vargas. You can hear Sooty in the background. She's uh, she's decided she's going to make her voice heard. <laughs> so, um, thanks for listening. As always, everyone. Uh, we'll uh, catch you for the next one. Until then, have a good week, all. Bye-bye.